Now what you'll also notice is that this window has open corners. <clears throat> it's not uncommon to have all four corners open like this. We're going to solve that problem in a few minutes with chevrons. Your video code for this video is 3000, 3000, 3000, video code. Now then, here's something else that's important. The sealant that you choose to use. You need to use a sealant that is a high-end, either a polyurethane or something that goes with the family of flashing products that you're using. In this case, since we're using Fortifiber flashing products, we're using Fortifiber sealant. If you're using somebody else's flashing products, if they have a sealant designed to go with their flashing products, that's going to be your preferred sealant because they've been designed to work together. Otherwise, use a high-end polyurethane uh, sealant. Some, I would not use silicone. Don't use silicone for this. Don't use silicone for this. Use a high-end polyurethane or a sealant that was created by the flashing manufacturer. For instance, if you're using Fortifiber, use a Fortifiber sealant. If you're using Top Industrial, use a Top Industrial sealant. If you're using DuPont, makes a great sealant. But use a, a sealant that's designed for window installation or designed for the flashing products that you're using. Okay, now that our sealant's installed, and notice that we applied the sealant on the nail fin, not on the rough opening. Why do you think that is? It's because we know the sealant is properly positioned this way. Right. Notice we put the window sill in first. We tilted the window into place. And what you'll see is we have really nice squeeze out around the perimeter of this window. Now notice that we have open corners here. We'll handle that, no problem. Many windows have this condition, but it needs to be addressed, and we'll show you how to address it momentarily. Window installation should always be at least a two-man crew. As the gentleman on the inside made sure it was level, got it plumb. He gave uh, Epi out here on the outside the go-ahead to place the fasteners. We're using exterior-grade screws. We like screws. Um, I'm not going to say you have to use screws, however, I'd urge you, if you're going to use nails, um, not to swing a hammer into the nail. Use a nail gun of some type, and probably a pass load's your best bet. Because <clears throat> a pass load won't over-insert the... It's not too strong. Some of the Hitachis are so strong it'll break a nail fin. But in any event, um, the screw is nice because you're not, you don't have any errant hammer strikes to hit your expensive window. Okay, your fasteners should be positioned 9 to 18 inches apart. I know it's not very precise, but that's as precise as you need to be because we're at sealant all the way around this window. And when that sealant hardens up, that window is going to be in place. So if your fasteners are between 9 and 18 inches apart, you're good. Now there's another dimension that you need to know, and that is no closer than 3 inches uh, to the corner. And that's really a dimension that's been designed for vinyl windows. However, um, that seems to be broadly accepted. You just don't want to put screws too close to the ends. And that has to do with separating the nail fin uh, vertically and horizontally. Now then, do you apply fasteners at the top of the window? The answer is yes. There are many urban legends out there that say don't put fasteners at the head of the window because if the building settles the you know, blah 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 that's all crazy you do put fasteners in the head of the window that ensures that your sealant gets compression okay windows in it's level square and plumb we've got fasteners we've got sealant now we need to take care of these upper corners with the chevrons. Okay, here we are. This window's in. It's a window that does not have corners, the upper corners or the lower corners applied yet. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's really important from a water management perspective. you got to use your chevrons that will come with the window. If you've lost them, then you need to make your own. 
but you cannot, under any circumstances, leave this corner open. See this corner? You cannot leave that open and expect flashing to repel the water away successfully. You've got to close that up. When we travel the country, and we do, I mean, that's how we got into this, is we investigate homes that leak. Many, 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 many times we've discovered this to be the problem. So I'm going to show you right now how to handle this problem. And I just want you guys to remember, this is really important, so don't not do this. You've got to take care of what I'm going to show you right now. We're going to backfill this hole with some sealant. Now we're going to take the chevrons that were supplied by the manufacturer and we're going to put them in place. And if you've done this properly, you're going to see sealant squeeze in, squeeze out, squeeze in every direction. And this is going to keep you safe. If you apply these chevrons the way I've just shown you, or should I say the way Percy just showed you, because Percy actually did the work. If you do it this way, you're going to be fine. If you don't do this, you're going to have leaks. Okay, now if you've watched many of our videos, again, you've heard me say this, the magic to a good window installation is in your sealant. <clears throat> you can see that we have plenty of sealant here. Do we ever leave our sealant untooled? Do we? Come on, do we? The answer is absolutely no. If you're going to take the time to use sealant, you have to take the time to, s to tool it properly. If you're going to take the time to use sealant, you need to take the time to tool it properly, and that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to show you something, a trick of the trade. <clears throat> See this putty knife? This is a simple little 99 cent putty knife, but notice that the edges have been radiused. We radius that by scraping it up against the concrete. When your corners look like this, you're going to get a much sweeter finished sealant product up against the frame of the window. You'll see it in just a second. All right, here's another uh, topic of discussion around the industry, and I'm going to tell you where we fall on this. Many building materials manufacturers are going to want you to put a peel and stick SAF membrane on top of your nail fin here. And that's because they make products for that and they tend to profit from that. I'm not going to say that's ineffective. I'm going to tell you there's a better way. And the better way is to use sealant. You're going to snap an imaginary line from fastener to fastener, and we're going to put an additional bead of sealant right there. And then we're going to tool that sealant flat. Now the benefit of that is there's no wrinkles. You don't need to clean your nail fin ahead of time. And water cannot kick in through straws that might exist if you don't lay your flashing product down completely flat. Now think about the second floor. Think about working off of ladders. Think about it getting a little bit windy. Do you think a peel and stick product is easy to use on ladders, on a hillside, when it's windy? Are you going to get it to lay down flat on that nail fin? And what if you get up there and the nail fin's dusty and dirty? Are you going to clean it first? I'm going to go with no. You're going to take some sealant. You're going to put about a half inch bead of sealant on top of your nail fin and you're going to tool it flat with the little tool I just showed you and you're going to move on to the next window. Not only is it going to be easier in the long run, it's more effective in the long run. It's more effective in the long run. It's a better process. So let me show you how to do it right now. Hey, there was a video code embedded in this video. It's back around the chevrons. If you didn't pick it up, go get it.